Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to do one of the things that I love to do most. That's to part the veil and peek behind the shroud of mystery that hides the secret religion of the ancient brotherhood. That which people like Malleus Maleficarum believe in. Albert Pike, Alfred Boyd Kuhn, Manley P. Hall, George Bush, William Jefferson Clinton. And you will begin, I guarantee you, if you listen carefully, and if you can think, you will begin to see the light. You see, they believe that the Western world has too long and fatuously labored under the delusion that a pious and devout disposition fulfills the whole requirement of true religion. Not so, they say. Ancient sagacity knew that piety without intelligence or religion without philosophy was insufficient and even dangerous. It knew that general good intent was not safe from aberrancy, folly, and fanaticism unless it was directed by the highest powers and resources of the mind. And remember always that this is what they believe does not make it true. And the mind itself, they say, had to be fortified with specific knowledge of the nature of the cosmos and of man and the relation between the two. Following the dictum of the sage Hermes Trismegistus that the vice of a soul is ignorance, the virtue of a soul is knowledge. The scriptures of old inculcated the precept that with all man's getting he must first get wisdom and understanding. And these were related to his well-being as health to his navel and marrow to his bones, and would alone give him a crown of eternal life. These things were pronounced more precious than all the things that he could desire. The Council of Illuminati therefore laid down their systems of cosmology and anthropology, which have become, by immemorial tradition, the Bibles of humanity, universally reverenced, and in them were given the ordinances of life, the constitution of the cosmos, the laws governing both nature and mind, they still constitute the Magna Carta of all human action guided by intelligence. For they were the first institutes embodying the Principia and Fundamenta of all moral behavior, the only true chart and compass to guide human effort in a line of harmony with an overshadowing divine plan of evolution for the cosmos. The corruption and final loss of the basic meaning of these scriptures has been, in the whole of time, they believe the greatest tragedy in human history. Like Shakespeare's tide, which taken with the flood leads on to fortune, but omitted, casts all the rest of life in shoals and quicksands, the wreckage of the esoteric gnosis in the centuries following Plato's day, culminating in the debacle of all philosophical religion about the third century of Christianity's development and ushering in 16 centuries of the Dark Ages, has thrown all religion out of basic relation to true understanding and caused it to breed an endless train of evils, fanaticisms, bigotries, idiosyncrasies, superstitions, wars, and persecutions that more than anything else blacken the record of man's historic struggle toward the light. And if you understand, if you understand that portion of their philosophy, then you know why they hate, why they hate Orthodox Jews, fundamentalist Christians, and members of of the nation of Islam. They believe that the most frightful of all historical barbarities owes its incidence directly to the decay of ancient philosophical knowledge 
and the loss of vision and virtue that would have attended its perpetuation. So what then must be the importance of all of this information that they say restores to the scriptures of ancient wisdom the lost light of their true original meaning? In a very real, real to them, and direct way, the salvation of culture and a free spirit in the world is contingent upon this restoration of the ancient intelligence to modernity. And thus you see the springing up of the old pagan religions in the New Age movement and in other organizations and movements throughout the world. You see, they believe that for man at this age, he has had new and mighty powers of nature suddenly placed in his hands, but yet he lacks the spiritual poise and sagacity to use them without calamity, the message in the movie 2001. Most strangely, the control of the lower physical, natural, or brute forces by the mind, or reason, was the one central situation primarily and fundamentally dealt with in the sage tomes of antiquity. And to affect that control in a perfect balance and harmony, and to train the reasoning intellect in the divine art of it, was the aim and end of the arcane philosophy which I have revealed to you as the mysteries. And I'm going to start off way back in history, folks, because that's really where it began. The human race is young in the, in the whole scope of the life of the, of the earth. We're just a, a young species, really. Haven't been around for a long time compared to everything else that's in this world. And I'm not talking about biblical years, and I'm not talking about theory of evolution years. I'm talking about from the time when you can see that man emerged on the historical scale of this world and began to affect other species and the world that we live in and himself by perfecting the ability to think. First original thought. See, there used to be a time in history when man was just like all the other animals. He didn't think he didn't know good from evil. He existed and lived by instinct just like the other animals did. If you want to believe the record that we can look back and see written in stone. Okay? If you want to believe that there were creatures that ultimately became this thinking man that you see standing up here in front of you and sitting out there amongst you didn't have this ability. Now if you doubt that, read Genesis in the Bible and you'll see that it's confirmed there. Wasn't there a time when Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden? They were not to think. They did not know good from evil. They were just there to take care of the garden. Is that correct? So this concept and the biblical concept agree. Man just enjoyed what God had put there and sort of took care of the garden. Any dentist will tell you that our mouth was not made for eating meat. So ancient man most probably ate vegetables and nuts and things like that. Roots doesn't mean that I'm telling you to become a vegetarian because I'm not. You see, I really believe in freedom. I believe you should eat whatever you feel like eating. That's your business. But that's known to people who study these things as the age of innocence. Something happened that brought man out of that state, and if you're talking from a biblical reference, out of the Garden of Eden and into the world. He wasn't innocent anymore. He understood that he was naked, and that his partner was naked. He could think. He could look around. He knew when something was good and when it was bad, just as we all do here. When somebody comes up to me and says, well, how do we know which is the right way to go? I know that person is setting me up to justify 
his bad deeds and I won't do it. You always know. We always know which is the right way and which is the bad way. The bad way sometimes feels better so we may choose that way and justify it by rationalization in order to make ourselves feel better about the bad that we did. In the mystery schools they refer to this mystical time of coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible or in the church they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that those who talk about the fall of man believe in God whether or not they believe in a savior they believe in God the ones who believe in the Luciferian philosophy do not now here's how that works in the Bible we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of that tree. If you do, ye will surely die. Isn't that the commandment? Lucifer, through his agent Satan on the other hand, told Eve, God lied to you. He's holding back the fact that you too can become God. But first you have to eat of the fruit of this tree. And if you do, you will surely not die, but shall become as gods. Isn't that true? So, from the religious aspect, we see that as the fall of man because man disobeyed God. We see that as the subjugation of the woman beneath man where she had originally been the partner, now she is subjugated beneath man because she was the agent of man's downfall. Is that correct? Now I'm not talking right or wrong. I'm not trying to insult anybody in here. I'm just telling you what we're taught so that we all understand what we're talking about because that's most important. If you understand something differently than what I'm trying to impart to you up here and we don't have the same definition, we're not going to understand each other, are we? The mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God, aside from man himself. And man has not reached that state yet, but can, this is what they teach in the lodges, that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the God within, and become Christed, you've all heard this in the New Age movement, you too can become God. In her movie, running on the beach, spinning around, I am God! Go ask her early in the morning when she just wakes up and goes and sits in front of the mirror and looks at her aging face and tries to cover it up with makeup if she's God. She may tell you a different story about that time. Around noon she might be feeling better and become God again. But this is the reality of the human condition. We'd all love to be gods, wouldn't we? My question to Shirley MacLaine at one time was, please, Shirley, could you make me a universe? She sort of looked at me with this hurt look on her face as she confronted her mortality and realized that she was not God because she could not make me a universe. She couldn't even make herself a universe. She can't even make herself look young again. She's having a hard time paying some of her debts. God doesn't have that problem, does he? And in her case, she. <clears throat> Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. For the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. And 
until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer. They do not believe in any entity called a devil and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level, their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind. That's why they don't oppose pornography. That's why they don't oppose certain crimes. That's why they say you should not be put in jail for the rest of your life for murder or anything else. There should be no death penalty because it was a learning experience. <laughs> And having gone through that learning experience, you're a better person now. This is what they teach. They believe punishment for these crimes is nothing more than vengeful retribution, which is wrong in their eyes. So these are really the two philosophies that we have competing with each other in the world today. In the mystery schools, they refer to this mystical time of coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible, or in the church, they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that those who talk about the fall of man believe in God whether or not they believe in a savior they believe in God the ones who believe in the Luciferian philosophy do not now here's how that works in the Bible, we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of that tree. If you do, ye will surely die. Isn't that the commandment? Lucifer told Eve, God lied to you. He's holding back the fact that you too can become God. But first you have to eat of the fruit of this tree. And if you do, you will surely not die, but shall become as gods. Isn't that true? So, from the religious aspect, we see that as the fall of man because man disobeyed God. The mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God, aside from man himself. And man has not reached that state yet, but can, and this is what they teach in the lodges, that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the God within, and become Christed, we've all heard this in the New Age movement, you too can become God. In her movie, running on the beach, spinning around, I am God! Go ask her early in the morning when she just wakes up and goes and sits in front of the mirror 
and looks at her aging face and tries to cover it up with makeup if she's got. She may tell you a different story about that time. Around noon, she might be feeling better and become God again. But this is the reality of the human condition. We'd all love to be gods, wouldn't we? My question to Shirley MacLaine at one time was, please, Shirley, could you make me a universe? She sort of looked at me with this hurt look on her face as she confronted her mortality and realized that she was not God because she could not make me a universe. She couldn't even make herself a universe. She can't even make herself look young again. She's having a hard time paying some of her debts. God doesn't have that problem, does he? And in her case, she. <clears throat> Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. For the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, Man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer they do not believe in any entity called a devil and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan, can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind. That's why they don't oppose pornography. That's why they don't oppose certain crimes. That's why they say you should not be put in jail for the rest of your life for murder or anything else. There should be no death penalty. Because it was a learning experience. And having gone through that learning experience, you're a better person now. This is what they teach. Who brought man the gift of fire? Prometheus. Who was Prometheus? Lucifer. What was the gift of fire? Knowledge, intellect. Has it man created industry, culture, society, science from the use of one solitary thing? Fire. Without fire, none of it would have occurred. None of it. Nothing. There would be no society without fire. That's how it's represented in the ancient myths and in the mysteries. Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. For the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God.
is taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer. They do not believe in any entity called a devil, and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They're atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level, their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind.